Welcome back everyone. This is the State of the Nation. All right, as I just told you, we all know the situation the country is in right now. COVID has destroyed world economies, put stable countries into turmoil and had a devastating effect on every aspect of life. We have to agree on that despite whether we like it or not. Most of us here in Sri Lanka face those adverse, adverse effects mainly because we are utterly dependent on the rest of the world for critical areas. We're not an oil producing nation, hence we need to import fuel. We are not a country that manufactures many types of medicines, hence we need to import that too. It's the same with food, raw material, so on and so forth. Now the whole of the opposition and the economic gurus have attributed all this to the simple fact that we don't have dollars in our reserves to pay for our goods and services. Mema vidas sanchita higaya me vana vita rate janata vage jeevita walta balapayam karana mattamata tiyura vi tibenawa dollar kota ekase 20 ak kiyanne ekka maaseka lankawa aanayane karanna tiyena bill gewanna gihama harida ewa dollar kota ekase 70 ak kithara wenawa eetat wediya aduwe tha videkata kiyowoth maasekata wediya aduwe maasa bhagayak uwi maasayak uwi athara vitara thamai tiyenne bayanakama bayanaka tattwe me dollar million 700 yen thamai මේ සියලු වියදම් කරන්න සිද්ධ වෙනවා. يعني අද ගෙවන්න තියෙන ණය පොලිය 17 වෙනිදා ගෙවන්න තියෙන ණය පොලිය එතනම තියෙනවා 200 ගානක්. We only have reserves amounting to the value of 3 weeks of imports. That claim my friend is an absolute lie. Let me explain. Now reserves are simply like your savings account. If something goes wrong It's the safety net a country has and we need to use in in case we need to use dollars to get our ducks in a row. So reserves are meant to be used. They're not meant to be kept in one corner and rejoice knowing that reserves are up. So since the year 2000 Sri Lanka has been putting its hand into the reserves pouch and taking in money to do business as and when they want. then we put it back into the pouch when we have enough money then at the time that we handed over government in 2014 end we had 8 billion dollars in reserves thereafter the yahabara yes, government yeah. borrowed a net of about 12 billion dollars so technically to the 8 if you add the 12 you should have 20 billion dollars in your yeah. reserves but unfortunately what we inherited was only 7 So naturally there is a certain tension there and we got to make ends meet with the mm. dollars that we have so there may be some element of a, a tension in the dollar market but that also we are managing and we are confident that given the next few months that this also will come back to a normal situation Now what we don't have is an inflow of dollars meaning enough dollars are not coming into the country but wait how does that happen my There are several areas where we get uh, the inflows of dollars to the country like tourism and foreign workers but still one of the critical thing is foreign direct investments so to get the inflow of dollars we have to do several things quickly first we have to stop the importation of unwanted items no you don't need that new car and also you don't need that new television the one that you're watching state of the nation right now is reasonably sufficient So cutting down on useless imports helps the country to save dollars which can be used to pur- purchase essential items like fuel, medicine and food. We should and must cut down on costs because that's something we can control as a nation. It's our, our, it is pretty much in under our purview and we can decide but incomes like uh, tourism and foreign workers remittances that's not in our control. It depends on many other elements. Now the second is to get new money meaning investments. Now how the heck can we get new investments when the whole idiotic hysterical delirious trade unions of this country are protesting here protesting there and making a mess of everything especially when we have idiots like the chairman of the PUCSL making irresponsible statements and in return dumb people going and creating an unwarranted crisis and showcasing to the whole world that we are going through hell. how the heck can we build investor confidence this is not a magic wand but you said the same thing a couple no of no i didn't say that please understand what i said and if you go and read that you will see that that is what exactly we have said these are measures that we take 
economic measures take time. Now, when we take an interest rate decision, it won't happen tomorrow. There is a transmission period. There is a transmission period for every, every economic decision. So people must understand that there is that period that is needed for the transmission of the policy. So if you uh, think that today the interest rates were increased, so therefore every interest rate will increase across the board, it won't happen that way. But there is a policy transmission. In the same way, when we take certain longer-term measures, there would be a policy transmission time. So that is the way it will work. So sometimes we are a nation that we think that this is all instantly driven. That is what we need to also understand, that certain decisions are taken early in order to ensure that the stability is maintained in the future. If you have the time, you really need to watch that whole press conference uh, from uh, the uh, governor of the central bank. It, it, it gives a lot of information ab about the state of this country right now. Uh, a lot of good information instead of the bull that we hear from the opposition. And uh, it is the simple fact that we don't have enough dollar inflows. We are facing two crises at the moment. One is the importation of fuel and the other is due to the lack of fuel generation of electricity. We can talk till the cows come home about how we can get our electricity grid back and maybe we can dig a hole in the ground and dig it as deep as we can up until the time that we actually, uh, you know, hit oil. That's going to be absolutely futile, that entire conversation. Right now, to come out of these two crises, we need to find a quick way to increase our dollar flows into the country. So how can we do that. All right, joining me now uh, is the CEO of Standard Chartered Bank, Bingu Malthevarathan Thriya. Thank you very much, uh, sir, for joining us. Uh, all the issues Sri Lanka is facing right now, sir, seems to be attributed to the lack of uh, reserve. Simply put, we have to increase our dollar inflows and strengthen our reserves to solve our other problems. Now, what is the quickest way we can do that? Thanks, Mahesh. Uh, so, Standard Chartered Bank. Uh, I've been operating uh, for 150 years in over 60 markets. Uh, this is not the first time we are seeing such a crisis. Uh, I can recall Malaysia in the uh, late 90s and India in the early 90s, and recently some of the African markets have gone into similar crisis. Uh, coming back to coming down to Sri Lanka, uh, I think you need to understand the context. We lost about eight billion dollars worth of uh, tourism uh, income, and we also lost our access to the international sovereign bond market with the rating downgrades. So with that, also we have increased our imports in the last couple of months, specifically I think we have increased the imports about $2 billion from a typical $1.6, $1.5 uh, billion. Uh, and also the worker remittances have come down to something like 61%. Uh, we are down to $2.3 billion of reserves with $4 billion of external debts to settle this year. So we are really, uh, you know, uh, we, we, are, we got limited choices right now. So we need to figure out, you know, what are the paths that we are taking. So the first path would be, I think the government is also working on these, these initiatives. Uh, they're working with the bilats. So if we can bring four to five billion dollars of bilats, uh, bilateral uh, loans, uh, fresh loans into the system, that will help. Uh, but, but looking at the scenario we are in, it's very unlikely. The second option is debt restructuring. Uh, I think, again, there are multiple areas when it comes to debt restructuring. There is uh, bilat debt restructuring. Again, there is Paris Club, non-Paris Club. Uh, and multilats and uh, international sovereign bonds. So on the bilats with the non-Paris club, that's predominantly India and China. Government has already, I think, started the conversations about you know rollovers and you know postponing some of the debts. I think the next piece is to get into Japan. Uh, that's our largest Paris club lender, uh, and also bring in uh, multilats as well as ISBs, international sovereign bonds. Now with ISBs, it's very complex and a, and a very difficult, painful restructuring process. You definitely need to bring in an IMF. Uh, as a facilitator. Now that's not a bad choice uh, given the situation we are in. Uh, so it's important that we bring IMF and then we work on, if you're getting into ISB restructuring, bring IMF and work on a proper restructuring program. Then what will happen is the multilats will also come and you know inject some liquidity in the interim. So your question about reserves will definitely go up uh, in the next six months if there's that level of support and we'll uh, restructure and we, we move on. But, but but looking at debt restructuring as a solution, I would say that's also very short term in nature, uh, because if we don't do uh, uh, you know, serious fiscal reforms and if we don't increase our foreign currency inflows, 
uh, we will have this problem again and again. So it's very important that Sri Lanka take this opportunity and do some reforms that will help the country grow in the long term. Again, going get the IMF, we have to be very careful in terms of how we agree on the fiscal policies. Front-loaded fiscal policies can slow the economic growth. So these are some things that the government should consider before getting into any agreement. True, it, 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 it indeed uh, makes sense. Now, as you uh, would have heard, uh, uh, Mr. Thevratantri, uh, you know very well that over 50 multinational Sri Lankan companies flourish and profit, especially during the COVID times. Now, if those businesses excel and making good on their front, how come that it's not reflected in our economy? Are these companies not bringing uh, their profits back into Sri Lanka? So first thing I would like to say is not only multinational, the top 200 companies of Sri Lanka had done really well during the pandemic. There are three reasons for it. One is uh, uh, the first one would be uh, the whole vaccination drive and the way that we've managed the pandemic. So that, that was a big reason for, uh, for the for the industries to bounce back. Second thing, it was in low interest regime. I think Central Bank very prudently took the interest rate down. And the third thing was we were also on a somewhat a low income tax regime. So those three things really helped. Apart from that, what these companies have done is they align themselves into new ways of working, like including Standard Chartered Bank. Uh, and also, they've done some disruptive uh, uh, work in terms of changing their business models. They've taken some courageous decisions to, you know, increase the bottom line in a very difficult situation. So it has not come easily. Uh, but what I would like to say is like, you know, there's a larger piece in the economy that's those are the SMEs. About 50% of the economy is driven by the SMEs. I think the SMEs really got impacted with the supply chain disruptions, lack of funding and lack of FX. So that has really led to a low single digit growth uh, for us because from last April we saw there was stress in, in terms of getting access to FX. So that has really impacted the SME segment. Uh, so that's the reason if you compare with markets like India and China, uh, our growth was relatively low, but not that low compared to our other uh, middle income countries. Lot of good information there. Thank you very much. Uh, that was the CEO of Standard Charter Bank here in Sri Lanka, Bingumal Thevarathan 3. Let's take a short commercial break. Upon our return, we'll take you to Geneva to discuss the latest on the UNHRC session on Sri Lanka. We'll be right back.